with the head coach of the Liberty Leopards, Joe Simon. Coach, thank you so much for popping on with us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You know, when you look at last year, I know this is a this is a season that that you had a couple of games down the stretch that were so close to going your way. A couple of steps right there. Uh, the thing that we always talk about is is going from that competitive to the next step of winning those kind of games. Uh, when you evaluate last season, what were some of the things that you took away that you guys did really well, and some of the things that you tried to build on going into this season? You know, I think some of the things that we did well were. Uh, just kind of progressing as the season went on. Uh, it took us a while. You know, we was a, a, we were a first-year staff, and, uh, you know, the trust that you need from coach to player, it, you want it to happen right away, but it doesn't. You know, it's really hard to get that to happen, you know, instantly. I don't know any, many people who have been able to do it, um, but we did. We progressed, and we just got better and better. And, you know, I think we proved to ourselves that we were able to play with some of the best you know, in our league and, and around here. And, uh, you know, that was a really nice step for us as a program, as a team. And, you know, it helped the kids to kind of buy in coming into this year. Uh, you know, offensively, we, we really started to mesh there at the end of the season, put up a lot of points. You know, defensively, we were pretty good. Uh, early in the season, we had some, you know, we played some really good teams at the end of the year. You know, I think that played a role in us giving up some points. But, you know, I like what we're doing defensively. I have a lot of faith in our defensive coordinator and our staff. So I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, just building on last year, building on those last couple of games. Knowing that last year's schedule was so tough and a lot of these kids went through it and they're coming back out of it, how much is that experience going to be something that you can build on going into this year? It's big. It really is. You know, you, there's no uh, – there's nothing – there's nothing you can do to teach experience you know it's just kids get it and they understand what it's like to be in the big moment on friday nights you know and it's uh, you don't know how to kids how a kid's going to react in those situations until they're in it and uh, you know now that our guys have been there you know they're not afraid of it they weren't really afraid of it last year either um but i do think that you know there's a um, what's the word like a period that you have to go through as a player when, you know, your game's on the line and you're playing defense and you got to get a stop or you're going to lose, you know. And once you go through that once, you're like, all right, you know, I can do this. We, we, we can win these games. And, you know, we, we got to find a way this year. You know, we found a way a couple times last year. Um, but in the biggest two games, you know, that we needed, we weren't able to do that. And I think the kids are, you know, they're hungry. You know, they're, that, there's a bitter taste in their mouths. And, you know, I think they're looking forward to getting it out or, uh, as soon as possible. Last year, the tagline was "Return the Roar." What are you guys rocking as a tagline this year? It's uh, it's ring the bell. Um, it ring. We ring a, but we have a, a Liberty Bell that we ring after each win that we get. And you know, I've talked a lot about it already, but you know, not being able to ring it those last couple of games was was frustrating. And you know, we we, we want to finish this year. You know, we want to come close to finishing. You know, and that's something we've emphasized. And uh, you know, that's why we went with the motto that we did. You're going to have to have some big leaders in the locker room to help you accomplish those goals. Uh, who are you going to lean on, not just as a vocal leader this year, but also as emotional leaders? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because I feel like leadership has been outstanding for us, especially over the last couple months. Um, you know, guys have really, I don't know, I, th I think they've kind of realized that this is it, that, you know, for a lot of our seniors, um, you know, for all of our seniors, this, this is it. And they're, they're hungry. You know, they, they, they got a taste of success last year at five and five. Um, and they want to take the next step and get in the playoffs and make a run. And, uh, you know, some of the guys who have been outstanding for us really since uh, I took over. And, and like I said, especially over the last couple of months have been uh, Jeff Moananu. He's a senior defensive and offensive lineman. Uh, Chris Cunningham, you know, he's, I think he's one of the best players in the Valley. Uh, the kid is electric. He can, he can score from anywhere on the field. And I think he's going to be a good defensive player for us this year. We didn't need him much last year defensively. Uh, we kind of let him just focus on offense. But he, he's going to be good both sides of the ball this year. A uh, kid named Colton Whippercott uh, has been a fantastic leader. You know, he's just – he's there every single day working hard, showing the guys, you know, how to do it, you know, the, the right ways to go about it, to stay after practice, to come early, to put in the extra work that's needed. Um, Daryl Brown has been an excellent leader for us. He's a senior to be, and you know, he, he's a is a running back and linebacker. And you know, I can't say enough good things about him. The the attitude that he brings on a daily basis. Uh, Thomas Easton is another kid. He's a, a senior defensive and offensive lineman uh, who's done a great job. And Jaden Taylor. Jaden got hurt last year right before the season started. I think two days before it started. 
Uh, he broke his collarbone and ended up missing the entire year. So that was a tough loss because uh, he was a great two-way player for us. Um, who am I missing? Dwayne Moody, really good player, uh, receiver and defensive back, who's, who's done some nice things for us already. And Derek DiMattia, uh, he's going to take over a quarterback, and he's also a great defensive player. Uh, who, who he was a captain for us last year, and he brings a lot of the experience that we talked about. And you know, he leads by example, and he's vocal, and he's a great all-around player in person. Last year, that return the roar tagline got a lot of Liberty alums and a, little, a lot of legends of the Liberty past really excited about this program and kind of rejuvenated of, of their you know uh, support of it. And I know you brought a couple of alumni in to talk to the team last year and, and to kind of show them what the standard was for their success. Um, how much now, you know, when you look at the whole season, how much did the alumni, you know, backing this program and getting back to it, being excited about it, really propel you guys? It's great. It's it's one thing that I wanted to do uh, right off the bat because a lot of these kids don't know the history, the tradition that we have at Liberty. You know, I'm a Liberty guy. Grew up here, played little league since six years old at Liberty, and uh, I've been around some great people, some great, um, some great alumni, both on and off the field. And, you know, just bringing them back to teach these kids, not just about football, but life lessons, you know, just how they were able to go through the good times and the bad times and come through adversity. And, you know, some of the guys weren't on great teams. Some of them were. Some of them played Division One. Some of them played NFL in the NFL. Um, so it's, it's just been great to have them come back and to share their experiences with the kids and uh, help the kids understand, you know, what Liberty was, what it is, what it will be. You know, I really that's that's big, you know, for me because I love this community and, um, you know, I'm glad to be a part of it. I want to go from talking about the legends of the past to the stars of the future and the youth programs in this pro, in this Liberty football program. What have you done to build the youth programs and how excited are you to see the kids that you haven't even gotten the chance to coach yet start to build their skills down in the in the youth uh, youth part of the program? Yeah, you know, the foundation of the program starts down there. Um, and, you know, there there wasn't a Little League uh, prior to me taking over. I mean, I think they were, there was, but they hadn't played in a couple of years. You know, there were some issues down low where uh, the, they weren't in a league. So we got into a league last year and we're in a league again this year. And they're raising, doing a great job raising money to get the kids the, the necessary equipment. Uh, you know, I, a couple of people have come on board and have done a great job just, you know, with the kids, with, uh, you know, fundraising and kind of linking the two organizations together. That was an important thing for me. Glad it's important to them as well. You know, we had the kids come out last year and they got in the game for free. They ran out of the tunnel with the, with the team and, you know, got to hear the pregame speech and just, just be part of that environment and that atmosphere. And, you know, and I remember when I was a kid in little league and just being able to look up and see, guys who you know they were like nfl me i wanted to be when i got older and it was have role models like that so i take my kids to their practices from time to time just to uh talk to them and explain to them you know that we're rooting for them you know we got their back and we're looking forward to watching them play and uh strive to to be like some of the kids that are uh, in the high school now and you know the junior high program has been excellent you know they were undefeated last year they were undefeated the year before so it's it's good that you know we have that found foundation to build on you know you can't build the youth foundation alone who are some of the big names that have really stepped up and helped you with you know pouring into that and and starting that back up um you know so some of the guys on my own coaching staff uh, have, have helped me do a lot of that. And there's people in the gridiron, you know, Todd Smith is my defensive coordinator and you know, he's, he's, I'd say he's an assistant head coach too, because he, he and I really do a lot together. We put together a lot of the philosophy that we come up with, uh, some of the concepts that we're doing um, both on the field and off the field. You know, we have a, a great gridiron association, uh, Terry Long as our academic coach at Liberty and is just, she's one of the hardest working people I've ever been around. She does a great job with with the kids, with, um, you know, helping us put together fundraising and just coordinating events and, you know, getting the kids ready for college. You know, she's a phenomenal recruiting coordinator. You know, I can't say enough great things about her and what she's done to help. You know, Kara Morgan and her husband, Jim Morgan, uh, they have two kids on our team and they've been a big part of uh, putting this all together. Uh, Barry DiMattia and his wife, Tabitha, you know, I could go 
run for a while. And a new person who just came in, Adam Earnhardt, has, has done a lot for the youth program. Uh, really nice guy. He, he's a professor at YSU. His kid plays Little League, and um, he's been a you know a breath of fresh air to help us get things restarted and kind of rekindle in the fire down there. All right, when we're looking at this schedule, you open the season at Western Reserve. Uh, that's a big week one game. And and what kind of things are you looking forward to to that opening game and, and some of the things that you're going to prepare for uh, when you talk about Western Reserve? Yeah, you know, they I, they were good last year. You know, they had a 12 nothing lead on us. And I'm not going to lie, I was sweating. I was nervous. And, and we were fortunate to get put together a great second half and come away with a victory. Uh, they they – Hard ways with Jason Lude, who I thought was a really great coach, but they brought in a great coach as well with John Armini. Um, I've known John for quite a while, uh, both as a, I was a reporter years ago and I uh, used to interview him all the time. And I know how, how good of a coach he is, a fiery guy who, you know, has a lot of pride and, and just does great. He has a great staff. They do a really good job. And I know that he's going to have those kids ready. Uh, Western Reserve is another school with great tradition. And, you know, I think they have some young upcoming players that you know we won't be overlooking you know i know that this this, this team is going to be ready to go and uh, our guys after last year and after what we went through i think they understand that there's no overlooking anybody on our schedule because everybody's tough man you are used to seeing coach armini on the other side of those sidelines he goes from a team that was in your conference to a team that's on the other side of your conference in the other tier uh, so that'll be fun when uh, other thing that st- stands out on your schedule is you only have four home games this year uh, talk about making the most out of those home games and, and how exciting it is to just kind of try to make the most out of the four home games you do have. Yeah, you know, it's the schedule before I got here was already made. So we had six home games last year. We got four this year. It's, it's, it's kind of weird like that. I'm disappointed that we only had four this year, but at the same time, it was great to have six last year. Um, but this year, I think we're going to do some different events just to both get the kids excited, get the community involved, get the school involved. You know, we've we've talked a lot about that with the uh, administration at Liberty. They're on board. They've done a great job of making sure that, you know, we're all incorporated. We're all working together. And, you know, I don't want to give away what we're doing just yet. I don't want to find out. But it, we've got some events planned, some different uh, themes for the student section to get them kind of riled up and back involved. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the at Leopard Stadium this year. I can't wait to to get out there. I was just after practice the other day. I did a little uh, workout of my own, and I was looking over the stadium. You know, the sun's going down. The skies are pink and, and orange, and you know, it was just a great sight. I took a picture, and you know, it, it got me excited to uh, to get going. You know, I think our first home game is September third, and you know, it can't come soon enough. Uh, you don't have to give up your secrets now, but I, uh, you know, let's have you back on. We'll have a YSN exclusive. And you can release your secrets uh, on YSN. Sounds good to me. Uh, one of the things I want to make sure I touch on, you, you know, you're about to go into a season where you give up a lot of time and, and your family goes through it too. They make a lot of sacrifices. I want to let you give a shout out to your family and, and some of the things that they do to support you during your coaching career. And and especially this time of it when it's so busy. And I, I'm sure there's a lot of late nights and a lot of times when you don't get home at a, at a, at a great time. Uh, talk about what it's like to have a family that supports you like yours does. Yeah, I mean, I really appreciate you giving me that opportunity because my family has been instrumental in me both getting to this position and, you know, just b- building this program the way it needs to be done. You know, my, my brother, John Simon, helped me put together a, a golf outing. Really, I helped him. He did it. I just t- kind of helped out here and there, you know, raised a lot of money for us. And, you know, he, he's not getting paid. For that. He doesn't get anything out of it except for the gratification of, uh, you know, seeing our kids succeed. And, you know, my, my father helped me build a, uh, an office downstairs at our, uh, in our locker room. You know, I, he's that's just one of a million things that he's done. And my mom and my sister, my grandma, like everybody is involved. They've all done something or sacrificed their time with their own family, their children uh, to help me out. And, you know, I, I've been a lot to them. So I appreciate them listening and uh, kind of understanding that this is a stressful position. It takes up more time than uh, than I ever thought it would. But I love what I do and uh, it's all worth it in the end. And they know that, and it's, it's just amazing to have them in the stands with me. Uh, you know, I had a chance to uh, give my dad a hug last year after our first win. It's a special moment, and I was lucky enough to have a good friend take a picture of it. Dave Dermer, you guys might know him. He's been in the media a long time, and he was a, he got me the picture. It was just 
something that you don't get the, the opportunity to do. A lot of people don't get the opportunity to do. And I'm very blessed to, and fortunate to have that. Coach, I know you already shouted out some of your assistants, but I do want to give you the time that if there are any other uh, members of your staff that you feel need to be shouted out or need to be recognized, I want to give you that opportunity too because we know the coaches get the interviews, they get the limelight, but you have so many good people behind you. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely – you're only as good as the coaches surrounding you, and uh, I'm definitely – I definitely believe in that philosophy. Uh, Gary Montine is my offensive coordinator. Uh, Gary was a player at Struthers, very good quarterback, and went on to, to Worcester and did extremely well at the college level. Uh, he's a, he, he's kind of an offensive mastermind. He really knows what he's doing, and uh, I'd like to give him and Coach Todd Smith the, uh, as much rain as I can, and I, I hire them for a reason because I think they're great coaches, and, and I don't call a lot of plays. I really I give them the opportunity to do that, and, uh, you know, we always come together to put together our game plan. So, you know, I know the plays we're going to run are going to work and when they you know when they don't work it's not them it's me it's both of us it's a team thing and uh you know they, they do a great job jason stouffer is a guy who he runs our special teams he's also a, an assistant head coach who you know helps me in more areas than i can mention uh dave davis was actually my position coach in high school trying to get mad at me for mentioning that but he taught me a lot about the game uh both then and then when i became a coach i worked with him he taught me a ton uh, you know, the, he's he's a guru when it comes to the X's and O's and uh, putting the drills together. Um, Doan McKinney, you know, young guy who I coached, actually. Uh, he was a 2012 grad of Liberty. And he brings the energy on a daily basis. Uh, smart guy, understands, the, you know, personnel, where to put guys, who's going to do this, who's going to do what, who might not be ready for Friday nights. And uh, we brought a couple of new guys on. Uh, well, before I get to the new guys, Tony Corso. Uh, is a line coach for us and uh, one of the most dedicated coaches I've ever been around. Uh, he's a Howland grad and uh, he understands the game from top to bottom. And, you know, he just, he, he gives all as much time as he possibly can. And uh, again, another guy who sacrifices time from his family and friends to, to be part of this. Uh, Marcus O'Hara was one of the new guys there. He's a Hubbard grad, was really good at Hubbard. He's a monster. This guy's like six, seven, I'd say. He's probably 350 pounds, something like that. But when you shake his hand, your hand disappears. <laughs> he has the biggest hand, I've, biggest hands I've ever seen. Uh, great guy, though. He's done a great job for us. And, you know, my junior high coaches have been great. Charlie Russell, Sean Perry, Nick Kratzis. You know, I, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Randall Gillum, our strength and conditioning guy, came back this year. Uh, you know, this is one of the, I think, in my opinion, I got one of the best staffs around. You know, everybody, probably every coach is going to say mm -hmm. that. I truly believe it, and I love working with them. Coach, we love covering you. We can't wait to, to start another season with Liberty. We thank you so much for coming on, helping us preview the season, and as the year goes on, we know that we'll talk to you again real soon. Yeah, thanks again for having me, guys. Appreciate it.